I'm really glad to be able to uh, present you uh, my work, uh, which is going to deal with a better one-year survival prognosis <coughs> estimation uh, model for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis using uh, UMAP and uh, read uh, regression. So uh, the aim of this study is to do a medical diagnostic uh, assistance for ALS by using uh, artificial intelligence and especially uh, machine learning to develop a reliable and effective model for <coughs> predicting uh, patients' current health uh, in order to improve their care and management. So uh, machine learning is often used in uh, medical studies for two uh, different things. The first one is pattern uh, detection, and the other one is to make a prediction. And here we are going to use a machine learning to uh, create a classification uh, model to, uh, predict, um, to uh, predict if a patient is going to, oh, sorry, the, to predict if a patient is going to survive to the first year of the disease or not. So uh, to do this uh, classification uh, model, we need a lot of data. And uh, the data that we use uh, came from a clinical trial a patient from a multiple cohorts followed over several periods during the first year of the disease. And during this uh, period, um, different characteristics, different uh, features has been, um, has been uh, collected on the patients, uh, like, the, uh, like their gender, their age, uh, their size, uh, the site of first symptoms, so if it is, um, so if it is bulbar or spinal. And we also have the uh, loss of uh, motor skills uh, in the, uh, uh, measured by the uh, LSFRS, which is a matrix uh, ranging from uh, 40 to indicate that the patient is in good health, like you and me, and uh, to, and to uh, zero to indicate a total loss of motor skills. So uh, to uh, create this, uh, this uh, model, uh, we use uh, we use uh, a learning uh, uh, method, and by using this uh, learning method, we are able to uh, obtain a machine learning uh, model. And then we can evaluate this uh, machine learning uh, model. So uh, there, there are different, uh, different evalu evaluation uh, metrics to evaluate a model, and the ones that we choose in this experiment the ones that we choose in this experiment is a balanced accuracy. So why a balanced accuracy? Uh, because it's the only metric that can take into account the imbalance that we have uh, uh, do, uh, between our two classes. So we have two uh, classes. The first one is the patients that survived the first year of the disease, and the second one uh, are the patients that did not survive. And um, on, on our data, we have many more patients that survived the first year of the disease than patients that did not. So uh, then uh, we uh, wondered how, uh, which uh, learning method we can uh, choose to, uh, ad to uh, achieve the best, uh, the best result possible. So uh, we use uh, different uh, machine learning uh, methods like logistic regression, a support vector machine, or uh, even a random forest. And we compared all of these methods. And we found out that rich regression provides better predictive quality for LS. So, uh, this is the uh, method that we use for the rest of the experiments. So here uh, I, uh, I put the uh, results that we obtain uh, when we use a ridge regression to uh, create the model, and uh, we achieved um, a, a predictive quality of 73.68%. So 73.68% uh, correct predictions, which is uh, good but not enough to be uh, classified as a good and reliable uh, model. So we, uh, we use a, a method, a specific method, to achieve a better uh, predictive quality. So what we use is called a feature selection. So a feature selection consists of choosing some of the features considered to be the most uh, relevant in the construction of the model to um, maximize uh, the performance of the link uh, method used. And uh, the uh, points of uh, learning uh, method, yeah, there are two, uh, two uh, important points. The first one is that it's going to increase the interpretability of the model and reduce the amount of the data to be collected because we are going to use uh, less features to uh, conceive our model. So uh, here I put an example of, of uh, how a feature section uh, works. So uh, on the right, uh, uh, we have a data set with four uh, different uh, features. So uh, height, weight, gender, and age. 
And with these four features, we can, uh, we can have, for example, two different subsets. So the first subset is uh, going to be uh, the one with uh, two features, so height and age, and the other one is going to be uh, the one with uh, three different features. And then with those two subsets, we are able to do two different running, so two different models that we, that we can then uh, evaluate. And here, uh, the uh, subset on the left is better because it achieves a better predictive quality. So uh, what we want to do is test and evaluate all uh, the, all the uh, subsets that we can have and then find the uh, better one. However, uh, if we make the assumption that one learning takes one second, which is a very, uh, which is a very uh, generous assumption, uh, we have 22 features, so it's going to do 48 days of calculation, which is very, uh, which is uh, way too large to do, um, to do, to explore all the combination uh, quickly. So uh, what we're going to use are um, a new type of methods. Uh, so uh, a feature selection method, so there are two uh, main uh, branches. The first one uh, is a filter methods. So a filter methods are statistical methods that are uh, going to evaluate the relationship between uh, two uh, different uh, features and uh, the explanatory features and uh, the target feature. So here the target feature it, it is uh, if a patient is going to survive to the first year of the disease or not. And then we use another type of uh, method called a heuristic, which, is, uh, which are often used in uh, computer science. And they are a computational method for solving complex optimization problems. And here we're going to use them to uh, find uh, uh, very quickly, in less than 10 minutes, the best, uh, the best subset of features uh, possible. And uh, here, uh, we, uh, ex we uh, invented a new type of heuristic that we call tournament in differential evolution. And this heuristic is better than the rest of the, uh, rest of the, of the filter methods and the rest of the heuristics. So uh, by using these heuristics, uh, we, are, we are able to uh, obtain a better results. So here, uh, we, uh, we obtain 80.83% of uh, good uh, predictions, which is way better than what we had, uh, uh, that what we had uh, before, with only a seventy-three point sixty-eight percent. But we also uh, able to um, diminish the uh, number of features that uh, that are used for the conception of the model, which is really uh, interesting uh, for our researchers. So uh, next, what we try to do is to use another type of uh, prediction, which, are called, uh, which is called a dimension reduction, and the method that we use is called UMAP. So the point of uh, UMAP is to uh, take the, each patient, and in function of, of uh, their characteristics, uh, UMAP is going to project this patient in a, in a 2D plane. So, um, here on the right, you have the projections that we obtain uh, using uh, UMAP, and each point that you see is going to represent a patient. So the green ones are the ones that survived the first year of the disease, and the red ones are the ones that uh, did not survive the first year of the disease. So by using UMAP, we are able to group uh, two uh, patients together with similar profiles. So here you can see that uh, the more you are on the right, the more you, are, uh, you, have, uh, you have more chance of survival to the first year of the disease. So what we did uh, next is to split uh, the uh, projection into uh, different zones. So um, here we have three types of uh, zones, which are going to be uh, colored according to the survival rate of the patient in this uh, zone. So the green ones uh, are the, um, are the one with uh, high survival uh, rate, and the red ones are the one with a low survival rate. And the white zone are the ones that are uh, where we have uh, too, uh, too little patients. Uh, the number of patients is, uh, uh, is uh, too uh, little to make a good, uh, a good, uh, a good prediction. So uh, then, what we try to do is to project a new patient to check if uh, the uh, projection with UMAP is better than the one with uh, the, uh, learning, uh, the learning method uh, with regression. 
So uh, here, uh, for example, I project three different patients. So the patient one is going to be projected on, um, on, a, on a green zone. So that means that it's going to have a 100% chance of survival, whereas patient two is going to be projected in, on a red zone. So that means it's going to have a close to 0% chance of survival. And patient three is going to be on a yellow uh, orange zone. So that means it's going to have a 50% chance of survival. And by doing this, we are able to, evalu to evaluate uh, this model by projecting each patient into different zones and check if uh, the patient is in the correct zone. So uh, by uh, doing this, uh, here I put the performance of projection that we get with uh, UMAP according to different survival zones. So um, here, for example, if I take uh, the, uh, the one where we have a survival rate that is less of 40 or superior at 60, um, we, uh, we are able to uh, achieve a more and more uh, better result if we, uh, if we only uh, see, if we only uh, very far check the uh, homogeneous zones. For example, if we have a zone with less than 10% uh, of survival rate on more than uh, 90%, we are able to achieve 92.65% uh, of a good uh, projection, uh, good uh, prediction. So, uh, in conclusions, um, by using a feature uh, selection, we, we are able to have significant, uh, significant improvement in results thanks to, uh, thanks to these uh, methods. And the methodologies that we use can be used uh, for LS for the first year of the disease, but it can also be uh, used for a different type of data set or different types of the pronostic. And uh, here, what we're going to do uh, next is to uh, create a web application where we, you can put uh, the patient characteristics, and in function of these characteristics, we are able to, uh, uh, to uh, use our model and uh, directly display uh, their prediction. So for ILS, uh, so ILS uh, uh, evolution and for a one year survival uh, prediction. So uh, thank you for listening to me, and if you have any question, don't hesitate to ask. Thank, thank you very much. I, I have a, a question. Um, do you plan to, to, to test to replicate, re, replicate your, your, um, your study in other courts? Uh, yes, uh, this is what we are trying to do uh, next, but we need to access to the data, and this is quite uh, difficult for now. But uh, that's what we are going to plan uh, soon. Any question? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I was just wondering if you have any patient that would not go to one year of follow-up and what you've done with them, if you have such kind of patient. Oops. I should touch rien. Sorry, can you repeat your question, uh, please? Yeah, sorry. Um, I was just wondering if you have uh, some patients that were followed for less than a year and what you've done with those patients if they do exist. Uh, so uh, the patients that did not uh, been followed for less than a year was not taken into account in the experiment. So I think that answers your question. And uh, we also have uh, patients that survive uh, way longer than... Um, than uh, one year, but we, want, we were really uh, limited by the data that we have, so we couldn't uh, really uh, check for those patients, too. Uh, the, yeah, I have a yeah, question. Yes. So the, all, all the data yeah, that you put, we agree that this was something retrospective that you took from a database, and you yes. already knew if they died before one year or they, if they survived yes. more yes. than one year. Oh. And when you started the experiment, and so basically, how many did you? Because when you showed the the green and red point, yes, to me there were a lot of red points. I was not aware that there would be so many LS patients because we always say uh, the mean survival is two to five years. So I was not expecting that you would have so many red points that died before one year, if I understood. So how? Wh what was the size of the population of? Uh, the global uh, and the, the one that was surviving less than one year? Uh, so we have uh, three times more patients that survived the first year of the disease that, uh, than uh, did not. 
and uh, when we uh, did the projection, we uh, took into account uh, this uh, imbalance between the those two classes. So um, when we uh, create the zones, uh, one patient, the patients that are not going to survive, takes, uh, uh, are, um, are considered to be a free a different patient because we don't have enough uh, patients that died uh, during the first year of the disease to do uh, a right uh, comparison. Okay, and, and then because you said a bit the criteria that you put, so when you put your patient at the end, the three, yes. to, to know if they fit your, your model, um, what do you physically put in the model? You said the LSFRS and, and what else actually to actually know if they fit... Uh, so uh, we yeah, we we have the LSFRS. We also has uh, all the patient characteristics like uh, their age, their weight, height, uh, and uh, other things like uh, first vital capacity, uh, site of offset of the first symptoms, and uh, I think that's all. So that's what we put uh, on the model to do the projection. Yes, uh, f thank you for your presentation. Just to add to the, the comment of Severin, but maybe I missed the point, but you used uh, 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 early, uh, previous version of the ILSFRS. It was not the revised version. You said it was uh, under 40 yes. points. So why did you use this version, which contains less information about the respiratory status of the patient, so it may influence your model? Uh, we used this version of, of uh, LSFRS because uh, z z that's the only data that we had. And if we took into account the LSFRS R, we, uh, we would have a, a very less patients in our database. So we only took the uh, non-reviser versions. Because in the PROACT database, you had uh, mostly the non-revised version of the LSFRS? Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, yes? I got one question. Why, why do you use a, a cutoff with survival, while, while uh, survival is a continuous variable, why don't you uh, try to use a, a, a modeling uh, rather than a dichotomy? Uh, that's uh, the experiment that uh, I presented uh, last year uh, on a poster. Sorry. And uh, yes, we try to, uh, to do exactly what you say. <laughs> so, uh, but... To be uh, to be uh, to be clear, the results are a little bit uh, are a little bit less efficient, <laughs> but it can work. <laughs>